Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Canadian Chamber of Commerce's Technology and Impact webinar. Uh, up next, we have uh, Emma Leering. Great, thank you so much, Ryan. I'm just going to get my deck up. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much uh, for having me here today to discuss um, about what Viamo's work is. So, um, as Ryan just said, my name's Anna Leering. I'm the Regional Program Manager for Asia here at Viamo, and I'm currently overseeing our work in Vietnam as we're actually just emerging into the Vietnam market, and we're actually currently recruiting for a new country manager in Vietnam. Um, I'm based out of Kathmandu at the moment, so really great to be with you all today. And um, I will be explaining, uh, you know, what Viamo does. Then I will go into some uh, case study work across Southeast Asia and across the whole of Asia. Then I'll discuss, um, you know, a little bit about uh, our work that we're doing in Vietnam and our upcoming projects. And um, yeah, that will be kind of the over overview of the presentation today. So let me start off by uh, talking a little bit about what Viamo does. So Viamo is short for Via Mobile, and we're a global social enterprise that provides mobile technology solutions to hundreds of development organizations throughout the world. So our HQ is actually based in Canada with offices in over 20 countries across, both, uh, across Asia, Africa, the Middle East and the Caribbean. In Southeast Asia, we work in Myanmar, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. And we've actually got our Philippine country manager, Jonas, on the call with us today. Um, at Fiamo, we believe that information is power, and we contribute uh, in improving lives by gathering and disseminating critical information to people via mobile phones. And I'll be talking in, in depth about how we go about doing this. We partner with and support development organizations um, some of those being Save the Children, World Vision, USAID, uh, the UN, in particular UNICEF, uh, Plan International. We also work, work with corporations, so we work with Facebook, uh, Johnson & Johnson, and I'll be giving an, an example a little bit later on, and amongst many others uh, that we work with globally. We also work with multilateral organizations, international non-profit organizations, private corporations and governments working across all sectors. Our role as Viamo is really to bridge our partners with their target beneficiaries in order to deliver or gather this really important information. So at Viamo, you know, we strive to make meaningful engagements uh, with target audiences who are difficult to reach due to literacy, geographical barriers, and especially in this COVID time. We also aim to really maximize the budget of our partners with cost-effective solutions that we can easily scale. We leverage proven, ready-to-go mobile technology solutions that achieve measurable results. So why mobile? Why have we specifically targeted mobile uh, here at Viano? So 93% of adults in Asia actually own a phone. And uh, if we look at Vietnam specifically, smartphone penetration in Vietnam has doubled since 2014. And there are now 51 million smartphone, uh, smartphone users within Vietnam, representing over 80% of the 15 uh, plus uh, age group population. But if we then look at rural Vietnam, 89% of the population has mobile phones, with around 68% of these owning a smartphone. So by using mobile, we're able to uh, disseminate or collect quick and real-time uh, real information. As I mentioned earlier, it's cost-effective. We can make the interactions um, exciting, engaging, fun. And I'll talk about, you know, different examples of this, you know, instead of uh, just having dialogue information uh, sent out uh, to your end beneficiary or the person you're trying to contact, we can turn this into an exciting game. We can turn it into a dialogue. Maybe uh, if we're reaching um, health workers, we can have uh, the information disseminated as a health worker speaking to a patient to really make it engaging. We can um, specifically target um, certain people, certain geographical areas, and certain um, languages within those areas. And we can also get these great measurable results. So we're able to specifically, you know, see, okay, we have, um, for example, surveyed 
5,000 people. And we're able to see from these results, these are the key areas that we need to you know, embed within the next and upcoming programming to ensure that we use these results to change and increase impact within the sector. So a little bit about uh, IVR. So IVR is interactive voice response, um, which some of you might have come across before. And this is a pre-recorded um, voice message. So um, this, the, the reason why we use interactive voice response is three kind of main reasons for this. The first one is to really um, overcome this low digital literacy rate. So, you know, the, despite the rates actually, uh, the literacy rates within Vietnam being higher than in some of the other countries that we work in globally, there's still access, you know, there's still um, low data usage within some groups. And even if people have access to phones, you know, people might actually struggle to be able to work their smartphone. They might not be able to go onto the internet. They might not be able to find the different apps. So by using IVR interactive voice response, sending out these uh, pre-recorded um, messages, people are able to just sit, listen, and the only interaction they would need to use on their phone is the basic keypad numbers. So for example, it would be click one if you would like to listen to information on agriculture. Again, why IVR? You can use any phone on any network. So this is really, um, ensuring that we you know, make sure that we reach all mobile uh, subscribers, no matter their access to data and mobile internet. And I will touch upon this a little bit later today. Again, it's also accessible in local languages. So depending on the region and depending on the specific um, area, we're able to customize it um, to that area so that people are receiving this information in their local dialect so that they're able to engage and understand and use this information, this critical information um, to better their lives. So I just wanna quickly uh, go through, you know, Viamo's global impact in 2020. So um, we actually reached over 30.5 million people engaged within our services globally. Uh, we are actually in 36 countries with in-country staff. And we've had over 206 million key messages listened to. So a key message is an actionable um, piece of information that is um, listened to by an end beneficiary. So with all this in mind, you know, what is Viamo's solutions and services that, that we can, you know, provide not just to, um, you know, the INGO sector, but also companies like many of you are from today. So we're able to provide, you know, digital strategy advisory. So within this, really uh, having a focus on a human-centered design approach and also content development, designing effective and sustainable programs. We see ourselves as behavior change communication specialists, increasing community awareness. And we can do this in a multitude of different ways. We can use, we can create national information hotlines. We can have uh, targeted communication campaigns to ensure that we can get that critical information out and therefore see a behavior change, a behavior change happen. We also um, specialize in data collection and feedback mechanisms. So this is something that uh, in Southeast Asia that we do a lot of, and um, it is focused predominantly on our mobile surveys. So pushing out these surveys to your end beneficiary and using this IVR interactive voice response technology to be able uh, to reach that person within their language, but also um, you know, in a basic phone and format. And then finally, you know, we have this remote training uh, aspect of our solutions, and this is mobile learning at scale. Um, and I will actually go into an example a little bit later um, on how we've used this. And this is, you know, training the trainers, so health workers and volunteers, and we can also uh, do teaching students, parents and caretakers. So I just wanted to quickly touch, uh, touch on some of our work across Asia as, um, as just some kind of examples on the different sectors we work in. This is just a few. We work across a multitude of different sectors across Asia. 
Um, but one of the examples for agriculture in Nepal, we were funded by USA's uh, Data Driven Farming Challenge at Biamo, and we actually, actually used this interactive voice response to give farmers best practice information according to the cropping calendar to improve their yields. For COVID-19 response, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit last year, we did a big global response and Viamo invested a lot of money into ensuring that we could get out this really essential information to people that were most vulnerable in the COVID-19 pandemic. One example was in Myanmar, and we actually conducted a mobile training uh, for community health workers to increase their knowledge on COVID and breastfeeding during the times of COVID, as there was a lot of uncertainty and speculation around, uh, you know, if mothers could still breastfeed um, within, uh, if they had COVID, if they were worried about having COVID. So, um, you know, we, we really worked with, um, with them to get this information across and do a remote training. In education, so um, in Afghanistan, we worked with Save the Children Care International, Catholic Relief Services, AKES and AKF. And here we did another remote training and we trained teachers on how to support stu students during the COVID-19 pandemic. In health, we worked in partnership with UNICEF in Pakistan, and we reached 2.3 million beneficiaries by pushing out IVR calls, uh, which educated people on the typhoid vaccination, and that was at the start of um, this year. And then if we look at environment, Fiamo worked with WW in uh, Cambodia to design and implement IVR info lines to raise biodiversity conservation awareness and improve um, forest stewardship practices among beneficiaries in the eastern plains landscape. So these are just at a more uh, regional across Asia level examples. And then I just wanted to touch upon uh, a little bit more in depth into uh, an example from Indonesia, really to give you a little bit of a flavor of our, of our work that we are doing. So uh, in Indonesia, we work closely with UNICEF uh, on a COVID-19 remote training project. Um, and what we did, so we pushed this information out through interactive voice response. Um, and it was to support the remote uh, capability building of uh, almost 5,000 health workers uh, in, you know, across June and December last, uh, this year, uh, last year, sorry. So we developed three training curriculums and it was across 17 modules. Um, and, you know, you can see them listed here. So risk communication, community engagement and many more. What was great is we were able to do it in a specific native language. The calls were short um, and it was a maximum of, you know, uh, five minutes so that each call was crisp and engaging for the end beneficiary. We were able to embed a comprehensive uh, questions built into the call to allow partners to check understanding and participation of the health workers. You know, we really embed this pre and post test to understand uh, knowledge uh, change, but also behavior change. And then, you know, bringing back to one of my first points, you know, it's cost effective. It only costs $33 um, to participate in 17 modules, you know, per part, per end beneficiary taking part in this training. And, you know, that's less than $2 per participant per module. So the achievements around this, you know, 78% uh, completion rate for key messages. So that's uh, listening to actionable information that people are able to take forward. Uh, you know, almost 5,000 health workers listen to key messages of each module. And that's 100% of uh, respondents of a callback survey that we actually sent um, out to everyone and mentioned that the modules were easy to understand and beneficial for them. So again, that really brings me back to my one of my first points. It's important that, you know, we reach everyone within society. And by doing this, we use basic uh, mobile phones um, to ensure that we reach everyone. So I just wanted to touch upon some of our examples in Vietnam. As I mentioned, you know, we're just starting out in Vietnam. We're currently building our team up there. We're really excited to go to Vietnam and, you know, start to unlock and unleash these, these um, opportunities. So we've worked with uh, UNCBS before, and we actually conducted a, a mobile survey. It was in Vietnam and Myanmar, and it really gathered an insight into the uh, poverty probability index. Um, of the UNCDF partners' customers, uh, and then the insights were actually used to better serve the customers' needs. So again, 
we collected this critical information um, and we were then able to support UN CDF to um, help position uh, the upcoming programming activities in, in, you know, in the right format. We also recently worked with GIZ uh, with, uh, to create digital strategy approach for their work within Vietnam. Uh, we, you know, we're currently kind of in discussion and we've got a few uh, new opportunities that, that we will be starting in the next few months. Uh, you know, we have this with UN AIDS, we're talking about um, AIDS uh, Day, AIDS and HIV Day at the beginning of December. We're hoping to work with uh, ERI on some agricultural projects and also with uh, FAO in the next few months. But I think, you know, it's great to see everyone here today. You know, we, we really want to also work with um, corporations and businesses. Um, an example of this is uh, in Rwanda, we actually worked with um, Johnson & Johnson um, on a remote training, and we actually trained 50,000 health workers um, on mental health. And this is around the anniversary um, of, of the genocide each year. So we were able to support on that. So, you know, with that in mind, I'm going to kind of stop here. I, I don't want to go too much over time. But thank you so much for listening uh, uh, about Fiamo. And we're really excited to be, uh, you know, a new player in the market in Vietnam. And, um, yeah, looking forward to the panel discussion. Thank you. Back to you, Ryan.